You're seeing a picture of Jay-Z right now, the rapper, continuing his attacks now on the president and lecturing the country on why white men are so privileged in an upcoming episode of David Letterman's new show on Netflix. Watch this. He's bringing out an ugly side of America that we wanted to believe was gone. And it's still here, and we still got to deal with it. And, and we have to have the conversation. We have to have tough conversation. We have to talk about the N-word, and we have to talk about why uh, white men are so privileged in this country. But as a celebrity worth close to a billion dollars, according to Forbes, is he the right person to be talking about wealth and privilege? Here to weigh in on this is executive director of Unhyphenated America, Mr. Christopher Harris. Hey, Christopher, thanks for being with us. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, you're welcome. Uh, what is your reaction about what Jay-Z just said? I think he's precisely the wrong person to have this conversation. Uh, it would it'd be one thing if he had just... Uh, given up his past, but he, he continues to promote a message, a divisive message. And, you know, the left is actually promoting him uh, because he's a shiny object to distract people. I mean, that's it in a nutshell, is that uh, you always have to look at who the left is trying to promote and, and why. I mean, they, they're focused, if nothing. I mean, focus is an acronym uh, for follow one course until it's successful. Their ultimate goal is to continue to push identity politics, and they know that by using a familiar face, someone like Mr. Carter, uh, to, to distract people, kind of like a hypnotist uses a, uh, the spinning wheel or mm -hmm. something like that uh, to get your attention off of other things. Uh, that's all they're simply doing with him. Christopher, I thought over the last couple of years the Democrats uh, were pretty much uh, decided that the identity politics that they had employed in the past didn't really work. So it is surprising that they would go forward with that as a party. Uh, I think they decided to roll the dice on this one again, especially because uh, they have decided or they feel that with their polls that maybe that this is going to take root, that they can put this particularly on uh, President Trump. But, you know, what's interesting is uh, I hear people now saying that, oh, President Trump's a racist, but yet uh, every Republican president's been called a racist because that's standard talking points for the left is just to uh, refer to anybody on the right as a racist. If you're a white person and you have an R after your name, you're a racist. Uh, but then they don't want to judge themselves by the same policies or by the same standards. What about the former administration? Did he do a better job? Uh, in terms of President Obama doing and, a better well, job with it, race he's relations? Complaining, yeah, because Jay-Z's complaining about white privilege, but we had a black president for eight years. Did he do a good job? Well, you know, here's the interesting thing. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Booker T. Washington, and, you know, he was, one of, he was the first black man to be invited to the White House. Uh, and there was a huge backlash when he was invited to the White House uh, by Teddy Roosevelt. But then we fast forward a little bit over 100 and something years, and you have Sean Carter being invited to the White House or hanging out with President Obama and uh, their Twitter buddies, or, or excuse me, uh, text buddies, and no one said a word. Uh, it, it's one of those things where they want to keep continue to promote an idea that's not really there. When you're dealing with individual Americans, dealing with each other individually, we don't have the problems that the left says that we do. You know, but when you listen to the lamestream media, that's what they're going to keep telling you is that they we're all at each other's throat, and it's simply not true. Well, but you hear that all the time, Christopher, and after a while, people start to believe it if it's not true. Well, you know, yeah, if it's on TV, then it must be true. That's what they're trying to get you to believe. I mean, right. and, and we've been indoctrinated uh, to, to follow that, lane of, uh, that train of thought. And if you keep watching uh, many of the other uh, networks, that's what they're going to keep promoting. It's all day, every day. It's identity politics all day, every day. And, and it, it's, it's a flood. And if you keep hearing it, yeah. you have to say, well, maybe there's some truth to it. But no, there's no truth to it. But they keep perpetuating it. Christopher, what does your group, Unhyphenated America, do? Uh, we're an organization that is exactly what we sound like. It's very simple. We believe that America is best when it's unhyphenated, that if you believe in, if you embrace, if you promote the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of mm -hmm. happiness, uh, then you're an American, and there's no need for any prefix or suffix. You're just an American. Yeah. And, you know, and Sean Carter, listen, we, we, I'm, a, I'm an, a, a capitalist. I'm a free market guy. I, I promote capitalism and free, and, and free markets. I look at Sean Carter, I congratulate him on the changes he's made. But here's a question, who's following behind him? This is why I talk about gentlemen like Booker T. Washington, mm -hmm. because he took his position, he took his wealth, and actually helped to raise black people in particular up from slavery and helped to move uh, towards racial reconciliation in America. Yeah. Is Mr. Carter doing that? Well, I, I think mean, the answer is no. Jay-Z, Beyonce, they've done 
phenomenal. You know, their music is great. They have, um, I just, I love their music, and I think they're doing a great job. And look where they came from, and they worked their way up. And they're capitalists. They're capitalists, And I congratulate yeah. them for that. It's yes. not, I just don't like the victim mentality. I feel like we need to promote positive and telling our kids to work really hard, and you can achieve your goals, and that's what America's about. All right, he's the executive exactly. director of Unhyphenated America, Christopher Harris. Thank you very much for the Thank conversation. Thank you so much.